What up my fellow humans, I'm Valentine and over the last few months I've been remaking this. This is my cyberpunk samurai jacket worn by V, the protagonist in the new CD Projekt Red cyberpunk uh, game, yeah. So I was lucky enough to be one of the top 10, well 12 now actually, we made the number a little bit bigger, finalists for the CD Projekt Red cyberpunk cosplay contest, lots of C's in there. Uh, you're using this jacket, this is version one of my jacket and uh, yeah lots changed since then. So you may remember back in March I did another video about this jacket saying things that I wanted to change on it in order to make it better for the finals. I estimated it would take me around four weeks to do and it didn't. It took a lot longer. It took me five months in the end and almost 400 hours which you'll understand why when we start to break down this thing and break down all the changes that I actually ended up having to make in order to get it to a quality that I thought was competitive, considering how good some of the other contestants in the finals are. Whew, it's gonna be, be a tough comp. So what I thought I'd do in this video is compare the two, uh, see what changes I made, why I made them, and why it ultimately took so long to remake, despite the fact I'd already done it, and uh, yeah, then we'll go from there. But there is a lot to go through. Basically, this badge is the only thing that stayed the same. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Let's go! If we were to go back to March and take a look at the video I made about this jacket, there were four main things that I wanted to ensure that I could change and improve upon. First up was the collar and the fact that the, the wires at the front here were pulling the lights and the LEDs all out of place. So I wanted to replace that mechanism and make sure that the wiring actually went in through the back. Second was the wires itself. So here, as you can see, these look a little bit ratty now. It's been sat here for, sat around for five months uh, with no work being done on it. Uh, the third one was the thickness of the leather it needed to be slightly thinner so you would get slight better detailing in, uh, in the bumpers and some other parts and the last one was the zips uh, so these have got some print lines on them because they were done on an FDM printer oh and the missing arm pocket there was five there was a missing arm pocket so they were the main things that I actually decided I wanted to remake on this version as you may be able to tell I actually went quite a lot beyond that now let's just flip the lights on on this thing just because it looks cool so, first one was, like I said, that I wanted to change the way the wires ran. Now, you can see that these new, when we do the side by side, the new wires are completely different. In the designs, the later ones that came out, that wire that was originally in here, that went into the front feed, now lo no longer is there. Maybe they realised from a practical purpose that it wasn't wasn't very good. So that's been removed. So it meant I was able to completely redo these. So instead of using wires these this time, I actually rubber cast them. So I 3D printed the models and then cast them in rubber. I think they look so much neater and a lot more like the actual, the actual game models. Uh, what that meant then is that the wiring is actually now hidden. You can't actually see it, but it's underneath here and it runs down the middle of the back. And inside the back, underneath the lining, there's a pocket on the inside back. There's a little wiring box in there. Uh, let's just continue across the front and see all the other changes. These little knob things on the old version were black and they had a bit less detailing on them. Now they're silver and they're a bit more detailed and they've got this like cutaway bit. Because again, new reference images came out. Meant I was able to do it neater. I'd learnt a lot about doing collars. Um, so when I first did this one, I made the mistake of uh, sizing it a bit incorrectly. So there's a couple of points around the back where I have to kind of sew it in on itself to taper it so that it fits flatter against the body. Didn't have to do that on this one. I, I figured it out properly. So it just sits much more nicely on the on the neckline. One of the biggest things you'll notice is the top stitching. So top stitching on this one, I did everything by hand, which is why it looks like it's done by hand. This one is done on a machine with a more contrasted 
thread. This was the big pain um, in redoing this. I actually had to go out and spend £800 on a flatbed industrial sewing machine. I bought a Juki uh, DU1181N if you're after specifics. But it was totally worth it because I think that looks insanely cool and the details in there I just I think it really elevates it compared to the hand sewn version. The zips, like I said, these ones had the slight print lines and they're just plastic with painted silver. These ones, the originals had no print lines because they were done on a resin printer as opposed to being done on an FDM printer. And then I made, I think, six and then I cast them, cold cast them in aluminium. So these are, they feel nice to the touch, they're cold, um, which you like with metal. And it matches the, the necklace, which is, it's actually AV, it's my initials. But that's a, it's a different thing altogether, that one doesn't matter. Moving on, the side of the collar here is significantly neater. I did, when I did the first one here, yeah, you can see now the difference. Um, yeah, so this one, I made a massive oversight and I had neglected to put this panel in before constructing the collar. So it's a bit cumbersome that I had to cut it all open and then insert this panel afterwards. I didn't make that mistake this time. I did it all at the same time, which is why it's all like neatly sewn in. So it looks loads better. This bit has hardly changed, but it has a little bit. Um, it's this original one has got two stiff bits of wire that run across the in, the outside edges, and it's just a bit of like leather folded in on itself, and it gave it a little bit of rigidity. This one actually uses metal underneath, so it's the entire thing is it's not hard, but it's it's got a lot more structure. It's actually um, a lemonade can uh, folded, so it's a bit of can metal aluminium. The bumpers have been made ever so slightly shallower. It's difficult to tell because it's only kind of one and a bit millimetre difference, but they are slightly shallower. And there is now a pocket where a pocket did not exist in version one. And again, it's all lots of nice little details. And this is a different zip. So there are three zip patterns. There's the left hand side, there's the right hand side and then there's this one which is actually the two combined which is the only clue about how this zip is actually supposed to work but god knows it it's not functional zip funny enough the ribbing material has stayed exactly the same it's one of the few parts that hasn't changed uh, in version one this cuff was wrapped in leather um, and edged in leather in this one, I again changed it and rubber cast it. I think again, it looks more authentic. Um, yeah, and these these little inlays are now slightly differently detailed. They're, they're a bit closer. And again, like here, you can see there were so slight print lines because these were done on an FDM printer. And again, that's that's been negated in these. Let's move on to the back. So looking at the back, the samurai part is the same across both, as is the little pieces that come across the side. These are the same. Um, because I had a lot more leather to play with this time and had spare, I didn't have to piece pieces together. So these lines are no longer, no longer there. The actual big design on the back is almost identical. Um, I made it, I think, like one... 0.2 centimeters shallower um, but it's not a huge difference one huge difference is this thing the jammer so version one ugh, it has seen better days but uh, as you can see there's a lot of the details are in there but then these things the reference images initially weren't great so I'd made these out of leather um, just to add some extra detailing on and they didn't look amazing and this, which is coming off now, um, in order to get the like text on there, I painted the white section and put a black water slide decal over the top. Uh, in this new version, I have massively updated the model, um, so it's got all these wires and stuff in there properly now, and these look really sweet. And instead of using that water slide decal, I have invested in a cry cut. So I was able to make a vinyl stencil and spray those on. So I'm not going to have any of the issues where things are starting to 
fall off on there. So that jammer looks significantly better than the old one. That's one of my favorite of the big improvements. The wires that are around the same sides, again, have been just, they're, it's, they're the same wires, they're those sky cables, but again, it's just making sure that they were all bent in the right direction so that it's got a nice swoop as it comes around the, uh, the shoulder. And there's all these extra like, little details here, like these things, this thing didn't exist in the last one and it had kind of started to break. So yeah, a lot of changes and improvements to that part of it. The side sleeve, I've got an improved patch on the arm. So this one was just printed on a design that was able to then be ironed onto a bit of material and then I put a trim around the edge in order to make it look more fabricy. This one has been embroidered. Um, there's actually, this is uh, bought from a seller from Russia off Etsy, whose name I can't remember, but I will put in the comments. And she actually does all three of the designs that have ever appeared. So what I did is I made this Velcro so that I can then change up the, the look of it if I want to. So it's a nice little extra piece. Coming back around the front, there's a new crystal jock. The previous one I did in uh, kind of clear holographic. This one has been done in a green holographic because the new reference images, it, it looks a lot greener. So that was done to change there. And the badge, as I said, is one of the only things that's maintained exactly the same because I have no improvements to make to a tiny little badge. One of the last bits that you can notice a change on it is the lining. Uh, in the original one I used satin which was perfectly fine. And I had these phone and control pockets that I'd laser etched, which were quite cool, but uh, I'd wanted to go a different way this time. So second time I used silk, so it's a lot softer and it's cooler against the skin, which is nice because it's quite a warm outfit. Plus I made these like little welt pockets using some one-off uh, ice dyed material that I'd made. So they're Nice and interesting looking, not that you ever see them, but that's not the point, is it? So there it is in its entirety. As you can see now, that's why it took so much longer to do. And I basically had to re-engineer most of it in order to get it here. There was one other cool thing that I could have showed you, but unfortunately, the batteries have just died. The collar is now uh, not blue. I mean, it's blue, but it's not just blue. It can now be set to any color that I want it to and I've got an app on my phone and I can play with the color and change the brightness and set it to basically anything I want to be, which is a nice cool addition. And I will be utilizing that a little bit in the video. Uh, so next up, I need to produce the video and the new pictures for the finals, which I can't really say anything much more about, but that is happening the day after tomorrow. So I've got final bits, I've got this, I've got the new trousers that I've remade, uh, I've got some other things that, new prosthetics and stuff that haven't been seen yet. Uh, weapons, lots, lo there's lots of stuff still to come. Uh, and really looking forward to going up to London and shooting with a great team. Got a load of extras and it's all cast and scripted and storyboarded and voiceovers. And it's, it, yeah, it's going to be cool. So that's going to be coming in the next few weeks. Probably won't be able to show it until after the finals, but it's coming, it's coming. Hopefully now you can understand why this took so long. And uh, as always, if you have any questions about this, cyberpunk stuff or whatever, then feel free to ask. Um, most of the files to make this, the patterns, the designs, the 3D models, all that kind of stuff are available for free. I've put them all on a Dropbox. I'll put the link in the description, but it's bit.ly slash cyberpunk V with a capital C. Uh, and you can go and grab all those files and help build your own uh, Obviously, if you want to like and subscribe, it means a lot to me. And hopefully I'll have some more quality stuff coming soon. Next up is going to be Ghost of Shishima. But uh, yeah. Yeah, fun. Okay, until next time. See you soon, cupids. Love ya. Bye.